first video in the thermodynamics video series brought to you by Engineer Tomorrow. I would like to start our discussion today by giving an overview of our presentation. I will try to do this in all future videos so you know what we are discussing and if it will be useful to you without having to watch the entire video. So for today's presentation, I will begin our discussion by briefly describing what thermodynamics is and how thermodynamics can be useful for engineering applications. After that, we will briefly discuss thermodynamic equilibrium and state which are used to describe thermodynamic events. So without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, what is thermodynamics? Fundamentally, thermodynamics is the study of energy transformations. The second question is, what are energy transformations? Energy transformations are scenarios where energy is changed, or transformed, from one type to another. Some examples of energy transformations are shown below. The first example is heating up lobster in a boiling pot. In this scenario, you are using electrical energy to add heat energy to the pot through the stove. In the second example, you are taking electrical power and converting it to motion which moves your fancy new Tesla. In both cases, you are converting energy from one form to another. The study of these processes is called thermodynamics. So now that you have an idea for what thermodynamics is, you need to understand how thermodynamics is analyzed. To analyze some random process thermodynamically, you have to understand the concepts of equilibrium and state. The first concept is simple, everything in nature tends to want to move towards equilibrium. Think of the pot used to boil the lobster in the last slide. If you turned off the heat, what would happen? Well you know your water wouldn't continue to boil, you would need to add heat in order to do that. Instead, the water in your pot goes to room temperature and you can drink it or do whatever you want with it again. The process of heating up and cooling down is described by thermodynamics because of this knowledge of equilibrium. And just to name a few different types of equilibrium, you could have thermal equilibrium where temperatures are the same, mechanical equilibrium where things are moving at the same speed, or phase equilibrium where something changes into a solid liquid or gas. In order to describe the system's characteristics at equilibrium or moving towards equilibrium, we use the concept referred to as state. The state of a thermodynamic process is described by variables such as density, temperature, pressure, internal energy, enthalpy, entropy, and many more. The good thing about thermodynamics is that you don't need to figure out all of these variables in order to define a thermodynamic state. By using something called the state postulate, we can say that if we have two independent intensive properties, we can determine the rest of the variables that define the system. This is a very useful tool that will facilitate analysis down the road for you. What is important though is that you understand that these variables need to be independent of each other. For example if something is purely a liquid, temperature and pressure could be used to determine the other variables, but if something is in a transition period such as boiling, where a liquid turns into a gas, the temperature and the pressure of the substance you are analyze are no longer independent. I know I am starting to dig into specifics, but I just want you to ask yourself questions as we go along. This will facilitate the learning process for you, and hopefully make learning this tough subject a little more fun. Don't worry if you don't know what the variables are, or if you can use the state postulate to analyze a thermodynamic process yet, we will get to those topics further down the road. Just be aware that they exist. So next time, we will begin our discussion of thermodynamics with processes and cycles. The understanding of this concept will enable you to comprehend things like internal combustion engines, power generation, and other thermodynamic systems as well as how they can be improved to make operations more efficient. But anyways, I am getting ahead of myself, we hope you enjoyed our introduction to thermodynamics and please don't forget to comment like and subscribe, we will see you guys in the next video.